So I recently ordered some of these uh, little 16x2 OLED displays from uh, Funnel, Element 14, whatever they're called these days. And um, on the uh, datasheet and uh, sales page, it noted that they support out of the box parallel connections using the 6800 or the 8080 protocols or SPI, which is what I was interested in. However, uh, when I had a quick look at the Element 14 website, it lists the uh, datasheet, the Vichet datasheet, which also lists that it, uh, it has an interface for the parallel and the SPI, but unfortunately, that's as far as it goes. Uh, it has interface pin connections for the parallel connections, and it has the dimensions, and then it just goes into legal disclaimer and nothing more. Um, a lot of Googling later, Vichet doesn't publicly provide instructions on how to convert this over SPI, and there hasn't been much help on the internet as far as searching goes. Very, very few results on using these over SPI connection. However, one thing I did note is that it does use the OLED 0010 built-in controller, uh, which does have some information on how to use it over SPI, however, not in this configuration. So courtesy of uh, the lovely Adafruit website, we found this blue character OLED, which is rather similar. Um, one thing that you will note is if you look at the, uh, the pictures here, it does have the pin headers at the top, un unlike my uh, boards, which have the pin headers on the side. However, looking at the back, almost identical. So this board appears to be a fairly generic design. And I mean, you can see on the, the Adafruit side here, it says the board is an EH1602A revision J, and the one that I have is an EH1602C revision D. So this is pretty much the same board, white labeled by Vichet, whereas the, uh, the Adafruit one is a Windstar design. And courtesy of Adafruit, as noted, uh, they have listed that there is some technical details down here and the NHD display datasheet seems to be identical, which is a uh, New Haven data, uh, displays and has some information on how to set the display into SPI mode. So if we go into that, we have the New Haven display, OLED display, basically the same board, 16, 16 characters by two lines, uses the 6800 uh, MPU parallel by default, but does have support for SPI. And if you go down a little bit further, you will see a jumper selections table, which was not in the Miche datasheet. And one we're interested in is the serial MPU. And you can see these pins LPSH, J80J68, LCSH, DCS, and LSHLH. Now, if we have a look at this board here, we will note these headers right on the side here. So by default, if we have a comparison of the, the pins here, so JCS is open, CS is low, PS is high, and uh, J80J68 is towards the right hand side, and SHL is high. And if we look at what we actually want, PS needs to actually be low, which it currently is high, so we need to do that. J80, J68, doesn't matter. CS needs to be open, it is currently low, so we'll need to remove that. And JCS, which is currently open, needs to be shorted. SHL is the same. So what, we'll need, what I'll do here is go into the process of switching this over to SPI mode, which as you can see here, I already have, as I'm with this hooked up to my Arduino using just four pins for data up here and power and ground. Oops, turn that off. And we're back. So what I'll do is uh, go through the quick process of moving those jumpers around, uh, soldering on some some pin headers onto the back here so that we can connect this, this second board up. Um, and then I'll go through the process of explaining the how I've uh, adapted the liquid crystal library to uh, use this board. So first things first, let's get this out of the way. Let's just connect our bench power supply here. 
clear the board down the way. And let's focus in on this. What we're going to be doing, let's put this in a folder, shall we? These edges. There. So what we need to do is remove We need to remove the 0 ohm link bridging uh, CS to low and move that to short JCS. And we need to move the 0 ohm link from PS from high to low. Simple. So, what I'll be doing with that is using my uh, hot air rework station. My little China stuff here. I just heat those. Let's just heat those very gently. Now, what we'll need to do next is solder in these pin headers. Now, what we'll do for that one, we'll be soldering them from this side. So let's remove the plastic on the screen a little bit as it's uh, just a bit of a hanging. And let's just move it back a smidge to there. And you know what we'll do? Let's set up a small piece, small piece of electrical tape. And let's just hold that right in place there. Easy peasy. Okay. So now that we've got that electrically taped in, let's flip it over. And all I need to do to get going is just pop down one of these corner connectors. Pop the solder there, not too much, and that's it. Now let's flip that back around, take the tape off, double check that everything's good. Seems to be in the right spot, nice and flush. No adjustments needed. Beautiful. So let's just go through really quickly. Beautiful. Let's double check that. Connections. It's not the best soldering I've ever done, and that's far from the worst, but it will do. Let's just double check this. Nice and secure, no movement. Perfect. So, let's get that out of the way, and let's have a quick squiz here. So if we have a look back over the data sheet, what we can see is using the serial interface, which is the one that we're actually interested in, the SCL, SDO, SDI, and select pins are 12, 13, 14, and 16, so on the back of the board here. They've handily numbered them, 1, 2, 15, 16, so we can tell 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so we're looking at these ones at the end here. So we're looking at pins 12, 13, 14, and 16. So what we'll do is let's disconnect, let's get our Arduino back in here. Now we've got power and ground on pins 1 and 2, so swapping this around, we've got pins 1 which is ground, so let's pop in the ground connector, that's the black ground. I've got a separate wire here for power, which goes to pin 2. And then we're looking at getting the clock signal done. So that's on pin 12, and on the Arduino Uno, the clock signal for SPI is on pin 13. So we have pin 13 here, which is the grey wire, so let's hook grey, there's grey, to pin 13. So this is 15, 
16, 15, 14, 13. So there's pin 13. We then have, let's go for the next one, which is pin 12, which on the Arduino is the master in slave out. So we don't necessarily need that pin as we are not inputting data, but let's hook that up anyway. And on the data sheet of the device that goes to, so this is the output signal. So we want to, from the output of the OLED to the input of the Arduino would be pin, oops, sorry, so that's actually pin 12. My mistake, and this is pin 13, so let's put pin 13 over there. Okay. And then that would leave the uh, blue character here, which is our master out slave in. So that's the actual data input pit, uh, port. And we would need that on port 14, which is SDI for serial data input signal. So that goes to pin 14, which is this one right on the end here, next to 13. And then our last pin, which is our active low chip select signal, which is the select pin that the Arduino marks low to tell the, L uh, the OLED that it wants to write to it. And we put that in pin 16 here, and I've got that on pin 10. But that, so the pin 10 on the Arduinos for SPI, as you can see here, are the slave select, which actually, if you pull it low, tells the Arduino to become an SPI slave. Um, really, it can be any pin, you can use four, seven, any digital pin will do. Let's leave it at 10 for now though. So let's put the plastic back, so that's a bit neater. Easy to read, and let's put that there. Now, this Arduino already has the program from before, so it should power up as soon as we give it some juice. So let's do that. Let's bring our power connectors back over. Let's hook up the negative, and here is the positive. And do we get anything? No. What did we do wrong? So let's try to figure that out. Ah, there we go. Gave it a reset. Off it goes. So as you can see, this one's green, whereas the previous screen is yellow, but it does work just the same using the SPI connection. However, this obviously needs programming the Arduino to get that going. Resources that you find online for using these with an Arduino uh, do not actually tell you how to thus program it. Uh, most of them only cover the you use the, the, the typical built-in liquid crystal uh, Arduino library. Um, however, we did not have that luxury um, and embarked on, well, making my own library to, to help with that. So, so this is the code that we're currently using with the SilverVest OLED 0010 SPI library in use. So as you can see, this perhaps without knowledge of the liquid crystal, but if you do have any knowledge of liquid crystal, this is almost identical to the Hello World liquid crystal. However, instead of having a number of different pins to designate what parallel what pins of the Arduino to send the data over the parallel connections, this only specifies the one, which is the, the uh, slave select, or the, uh, the chip select for the SPI device, which is, like I said, on pin 10 currently, but that can be anything. Um, what we'll, what we'll do, however, is I'll show you putting a more obvious, a uh, more complex uh, example in. So this is the Liquid Crystal Library custom characters. So you can see it's got the Liquid Crystal, the Liquid Crystal object here with all the uh, interface pins for the standard parallel Liquid Crystals. So what we'll do here is we'll add, include the Silververse Library, which includes it at the top there. Let's take a copy of that string, which is our class, get rid of the liquid crystal library, replace this here, and let's just put a pin for the select in 10. Now, what we'll also do here is bring in my little uh, USB ASP, as I prefer programming with that method. Plug that in, do a sketch, and upload using programmer. As we can see, uploading and it did not work. Hmm. So one thing that may be the issue here, if we pop that out, let's give it a reset, full reset, and there we go, functioning. 
So one thing is the initialization. Unfortunately, these devices do not have a reset pin and they can only be initialized once at immediately after power up. So if they're already initialized, it can be a little bit tricky to get them in a reinitializable state. Whereas obviously, as you could see, I needed to completely power it down and power it back up. But what we can see here is we're missing a little bit. So let's modify this example, which actually uses a potentiometer to show the delay of this little man jumping or raising his arms, I guess. Um, but instead, let's take that code out. Yeah, let's put the jumping man at the first position on that line, get him right, second position on that line, get him right. Let's change this delay time to 500 milliseconds, and again. And right at the end here, what we'll do is we will uh, CD set cursor, and let's set it to position four on the second line, and let's print out the seconds since the program was started using the millis divided by 1000. So let's upload that program again. You can see the SPI going crazy as it's actually uploading over your SPI. And there's our counter. So for this display, I have actually released the uh, Arduino library uh, that I've uh, built for this use. Um, it is available on GitHub. So as you can see here, this is the Arduino library for driving 16 by two OLED 0010 displays via SPI it is specifically only for OLED 16 by 2 displays and it spots all basic features of the list liquid crystal and it does seem to work. Um, what you can see here is the unfortunately because of the way that this uh, device functions um, one of the things while I was implementing this is that uh, the liquid crystal uh, library obviously implements a parallel processing. Uh, switching to SPI, the hardware SPI implemented on the Arduino, it's actually in the AVR, the Atmega uh, 328p microcontroller in these boards. Um, the hardware SPI that it uses seems to only support sending 8 bits at a time. Unfortunately, this screen, oops, drop down, drop the power pin. Let's put that back in. Unfortunately, this screen uh, requires to send 10 bits of data. Two bits is a header, which indicates one bit with whether you are sending a data or sending a command. And the second bit is indicating whether you are reading or writing. And then the final eight bits, uh, the actual byte of data that you are uh, writing to the screen at whatever position. Um, per command, you actually have to send the header for every single command that you want to run. But when you're sending a stream of data, you only have to send the header once. However, as, as noted, with the hardware SPI, we can only send eight bits at a time. Um, doesn't seem to exactly be able to be worked around, not in a way that I could figure out. I'm no expert. I had a read of the the Atmega data sheet itself, and it seems to be a limitation in that chip's specific hard implementation of hardware SPI, um, which makes sense. SPI is designed to really write one byte at a time, so uh, yeah. So it's a win implementation for this for this OLED. So unfortunately, I had to implement a software SPI, which not particularly difficult. As you can see on the data sheet here, it actually shows you exactly how the timing is done. SPI is a pretty basic standard of serial interfacing. Uh, it shows you exactly how sending the, there's the clock, you pull the chip select low. As the clock dips down, you send your byte, then you rise the clock dip down, send the byte, uh, bit, sorry, send the bit, rise the clock, send, drop down, send the bit, rise the clock, etc, etc. Um, if you're reading, which for this particular device I'm not reading anything, uh, you can also read that byte back from the uh, SDO pin. And the same for data transmission. Um, but uh, yeah, as you can see in the class here, um, I've actually implemented at the bottom a using digital writes mostly, um, implementation of sending individual bits by pulsing the clock low, sending, setting the master out slave input to whatever you want to set it to for each individual bit and then pulsing the clock high again. And this allows, this code allows sending 10 bits of data over SPI. Um, uh, yeah, that's, that's how it works. Um, it's a pretty basic implementation, free to use.
and uh, I hope that uh, anyone else that orders this particular display will be able to get some benefit out of, well, actually being able to use it. This was a fun little project for me, uh, first kind of real Arduino library making, so it's welcome to uh, any suggestions that anyone has on how to improve my library if you want to have a poke around. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching.